And let me just kind of pull this up. This is all my artwork. These pieces are six foot by eight foot comic books. So when I was your age, I was into comic books. And my mom threw out 200 of my comic books. Okay? I still love them, <laughs> but I'm tight. Still, right? Because those books are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars now, right? But what's even more important is that my love for comic books, I continue to pursue it. Even though mom was like, well, you can't get a job being an artist, baby. Who's gonna hire you to, you go be one of those guys on the street that do your photo in like five minutes? I said, no, I'm passionate about it. So my love for art allowed me to kind of pursue it and it got me into school. So by the age of 21, I was in my master's program at NYU. I was painting those paintings that you saw. This is one is my favorite because I got sued over this. So in 1996, when Tupac got shot, well, you weren't born yet. <laughs> and so when Tupac got shot, uh, everybody was really playing his music and what have you. And I was at Clark Atlanta University. It's a historically black college. And I painted this painting in a class to kind of celebrate his All Eyes on Me, um, his album. And I was walking through campus and one of the brothers saw it and he said, you know what, man, you should, you should make t-shirts out of that. Now, mind you, I'm on the college campus and I'm broke. I have no value, I have no money. And he said, you know what, you should do that. People will buy it. So you know what I did? I called my dad and I said, Pop, uh, can you loan me $200? And I took photos of this painting and turned it into postcards. Now, I don't know if you guys know what homecoming is. All right, so Clark Atlanta, historically black college, Atlanta, picture it. Right? You've got all these folks, beautiful, brown people coming in at a time, and it was packed. And I walked around with a thousand of these cards. I sold them at seven dollars each. I sold them out. So what's seven times a thousand? Seven thousand. How much did I invest? Two hundred. Two hundred. You see the return? Right? So it was at that point that I realized that my passion could actually create value for me. Like, I didn't have to be broke. I just have to be smarter and not work harder. Mm -hmm. So I pursued my artwork. Now, my artwork took me into, uh, I was in my doctoral degree, my PhD degree at 24. So I was doing it 24, but I was still broke. <laughs> like, so I, I realized that I dropped out and I started teaching. And teaching in Brownsville, Brooklyn. Everybody familiar with Brownsville? Okay. So in Brownsville, Brooklyn, taught right. for several years in the junior high school. Started out pushing the art cart, doing artwork, and then that eventually led me to uh, running a beacon program. Now, you guys are familiar with beacon programs. So I ran a beacon. Now, beacons, if you know, they connect to schools. You got all these different programs. So I wanted to push arts and technology, but we had no computers. So I started to write grants, and lo and behold, I started getting money in for computers. So that's where my passion connected with something else. It was art and then it was technology. And so we started getting $100,000 from Hewlett Packard. We got 100,000 from Microsoft. And so now I'm, I'm really loving art and technology and I'm, and I'm seeing how can I blend it? Well, it blend by me starting to do graphic design. How many of you guys do logos? Or know what a logo is, right? My first logo, I made $200. I simply sketched it on a piece of paper I scanned it into a computer and I sold it to someone for $200. That 200, the guy said, man, I love this logo. Can you do a website? I didn't know how to build a website. So I found someone that built it for me. He charged me 500, what I charge? Thousand. A thousand. <laughs> Get the 50-50 split. Right? And I made $500 by not doing anything. So I'm learning that my passion can translate into value the more I do it. So I'm telling you guys, here's a couple things I want you to take away with. Build skills. Say that with me. Build, Build skills. skills. You have no skills <coughs> right now. Even though you're in class, you're taking science, you're taking science, <coughs> there is nothing preventing you from going online and building a new skill. The thing that we're, we love to have our social media influencers come in and talk about this, but my biggest issue with social media is that we all use it, but we don't own it. We didn't create any of it. So in that sense, we're consumers, we're not producers. 
So this is the time where you guys, when you get back home from school, jump on a computer, go to codeanywhere.com and start teaching yourself how to code. And in fact, there's a, uh, an app that I want you all to download today. It's called Solo Learn. I'll pull it up on the uh, computer. And Solo Learn lets you teach yourself at your own thing. It's free. Download this app and you can teach yourself code from your phone. So when you're on the train, going to school, learn a new language. So when you talk about the English language and how China is going to be the largest country that speaks English, here's the issue. English is not the only language you gotta learn. Russian. Okay? And I'm not even talking about like cultural languages. I'm talking about languages like code, right? That's a language that you've got to learn to be successful in the new 21st century, okay? So none of that stuff, you may not get any of that stuff from your teachers at school. And that's no disrespect, because they didn't get it. I didn't get it. But it doesn't mean that you're off the hook because knowledge is everywhere. Isn't that right? Knowledge is everywhere. Google is everywhere. I call it the Google, right? Because you can put any question that you have about the world in Google, and it will answer you in that moment. You have no excuses. Does that make sense, guys? So, I wanna show you this new technology that we were talking about and why I'm excited. And I think Mr. Ross has brought it to your school. So I'm gonna do a quick, find a quick video on this. And we're excited about this because we believe that this type of tech is actually going to change the, the way that we learn and the way that we work. So I want you to take a quick look at the HoloLens video, and then I'll finish up and get you guys to lunch. We don't have a voice. We have politicians that represent us, but they don't represent us in a way where we as the community Able to have the line of communication, I do believe it would make me and my family feel a lot more comfortable with them being here. Yes. Huh? Solo. Okay, I'll hop in a second. Here we go. Technology is all around us. We use it in every aspect of our lives. It enables us to 